Oh, all right, I'm going to show you some proof that Jesus Christ and God the Father are one being. They're not two persons, as the Trinitarians claim. They're one being. Because the Trinitarians, they'll say they are two separate persons. They're both fully God, but they're not two gods, somehow. And the Holy Spirit is also fully God, but he's not a third God. You know, it's ridiculous. They're three in one, 1 John 5, 7, but they're not three persons. That, it's that simple. John chapter 12, verse 44 to 45. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. He that, or verse 45, He that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. So when you believe on Jesus, you're believing on him and the one who sent him? You know, you've seen him, you've seen the one who sent him. When you're believing on him, you're not believing on Jesus, you're believing on the one who sent him, which is the Father. How do you get around that? They are one being. When you see, if you've seen Jesus, if you've seen the Father. It's that simple. John chapter 14, verse 7 to 9. If ye had known me, ye would have known my Father also. And from the henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet, ha yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. How sayest how sayest thou then? Show us the Father. So have you seen Jesus? Have you seen the Father? And notice how he also says, if you've known him, you've known the Father. How do you get around that? They're one being. Jesus and the Father are one. John chapter 10, verse 28 to 30. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Notice right here, Jesus says, he says that they won't be able to pluck them out of my hand, but then he says they won't be able to pluck them out of the Father's hand. So how does that work? Are we in Jesus and the Father's hand at the same time? Yes, we are, because they are one being. That's how it works. They're, we're not in two separate hands. They are one being. And, and, and notice in verse 30, he says, I and my Father are one. It's that simple. John chapter 15, verse 23 to 24. He that hateth me, hateth my father also. If I had not done, or sorry, if I had not done among those them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now I have they had, sorry, not good at reading on a computer. But now they have both, or have they both seen and hated both me and my father. So if you hate Jesus, if you hate, you're hating his father too. So how can they be two separate persons if you're hating Jesus? And so if he's, a, if he's a separate person, I'll say it this way. If Jesus is a separate person and Father's a separate person, how is it that you're hating Jesus and hating his Father at the same time? Because they are one being. That's the biblical Godhead. John chapter 8, verse 18 and 19. I'm the one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. They, that then, they sent, sorry, then said they unto him, where is thy father? Jesus answered, you, need, you neither known me nor my father. If you had known me, you should, have, you should have known my father also. So if you've known Jesus, you've known the father. So that's just like in John 14. And sorry, again, I'm not good at reading on a computer. I just, I'm, I'm not good at reading in general. That's just the just struggle I have. I'm not, I'm, I can't, like, I'm not good at reading in general. But that's not the point, obviously. The point is that if you, if you have known Jesus, you've known the father. So how does that work if they're two separate persons? They're not. Jesus is fully God within himself. That's simple. Here's a good one. A really good one that makes a problem for this. John chapter 3 verse 13. No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. So the Son of Man is in heaven and on earth at the same time. Well, guess who else is in heaven? God the Father. I, I've written in my note, Jesus is on heaven while on, while on earth, and the Father is also in heaven. So Jesus is in heaven in the sense that the Father, his soul is in heaven, and Jesus, the body, obviously the body of the Godhead is on earth. The soul is in heaven, the body is on earth. And obviously the soul is in Jesus too, you obviously get that as well. But, and you say, well, how does that work? I don't know. You know, if you can explain God with your carnal mind, you want, you want to get a different God, if that's the case. You know, I can't explain God. You say, well, how does that work? I don't know. I can't explain God. If you can explain God, you, 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 basically you need a different God. I'll say it that way. You have to get a different God. If you can explain God, the eternal God of the universe, with your carnal fleshly mind. You want, to, you want to get a new God. But Jesus is, on, is in heaven and on earth at the same time. They're one being. That's simple. So I just wanted to show you guys that. I mean, the Trinity just is completely foreign to Scripture. It's not biblical. Jesus and the Father are one being. They're one person. Now, again, there is separation, obviously. The Son can separate from the Father. The body can separate from the soul. That's where you get verses like in Acts 2, 32 to 33, or John, or not John, or Acts chapter 7, verse 55 to 56, where Jesus is at the right hand of God the Father. There is still separation, but they're not 
three persons. They're, they're body, soul, and spirit. That simple. So I just wanted to point that out. Don't be deceived by this Trinitarian uh, satanic heresy. God bless you. Goodbye.